Firestorm, and Sunray, Phoenix Sunray, and maybe one more. There's not many anymore. They got rid of a lot of them, but uh, if you don't include items or anything like that, like, how big of a nerf was this to Death Brother? Is this like a, a buff early game and a nerf late game? I I think it's it should definitely be a, a nerf late game, right? Because when heroes get big enough HP boost, their percentage is better. But I think the buff early game and mid game is actually quite overwhelming in certain matchups. Like it's a very big buff in those situations. Keep in mind, to begin with, it got nerfed to 20, 40, 80, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, and then immediately after in the B patch, it got bumped up to now draining 100 per second on level 4. Mm. Um, at the time that you hit this, you are amazing in the game. I don't think... I think there's very few heroes that this is worse against than the old one right as you get it, right? So at that point in time, DP is one of the strongest heroes on the map, and then it's about making use of that to, to snowball the game. And that's also, I think, part of why we see DP coming back to mid, because she was played almost exclusively as offlane and as support for quite a while and not really favored in mid. But I think with the changes, she can really set some tempo out of the mid lane. Not going to be the case this game, obviously. Uh, but yeah, definitely something to look out for in the DP series that we get. Okay. The battle begins. game is now underway. Bounty runes have cometh. And what kind of a difference would you say as we're going to see some action onto, what are we going to call him? UGD or UGD? Uh, UGD, I guess. UGD taking some damage here. What difference have the terrain uh, changes made in terms of win rates? Do you know? Or the uh, I don't know. This, I don't know how meaningful the sample is yet either. Um, I mean, there's been two full qualifiers, so probably quite meaningful. I would imagine the dire win rate is down. Uh, but it might still be higher than the radiant one. I'm actually not sure. Um, but yeah, the, the, the intention with these changes were to nerf Dire. So if they weren't successful with that, they would probably change something again already, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, that's true. What if it made it worse somehow? Do you think they would yeah, actually would patch it to change it before PI? I mean, we have 32B, right? So if but it was this came in 32. See, how often do you see terrain changes as a B or a C, right? That's true. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if it's egregious, like let's say Dire just has like a stupid 65% win rate in all <laughs> games, right? Like obviously you can't go to TI with that, but yeah. I don't think it's that extreme. But I mean, it might still be slightly Dire favored. I wouldn't be surprised, right. but I don't think it's anywhere near the 60% we saw at the last major, whatever it was. Quinn gonna take a full EMP in the mid lane as Early on, 6-2 CS versus the 3-1 and one from Soldi, which shouldn't be that big of a surprise because Quaswex, in terms of the right-click, not going to be too fearsome. Hey, are we going to be seeing like the exact same Invoker brother we've been seeing for years, which is the Spirit Vessel into Midas? Uh, pretty likely. I think the Midas and Invoker is even more valued now, but something we've started seeing more is also Invoker's going Exor, even to start. Obviously, he's not doing that this game, but he could go for the hybrid build, where you go 4-4-4. Four, four, four. You get the early Tornado EMP build to set tempo, and then you start leveling Exort so that when your Midas starts giving value, you have a lot of damage to offer. I could see that being good this game because I think there's there's two ways of looking at it. Either you can go the full Quaswex path and you really play actively and then you fall off. Uh, but you could also think, okay, can we actually accomplish it enough? Or do we want to not put all the eggs in the PL basket to carry and cover our own bases a bit more there as well. Nice damage bottom here from Shu and Paradise onto Les Lau, but uh, Paradise has skilled Double Ganger instead of Phantom Rush. Pretty unusual uh, to see that, probably using it to dodge Brambles, but with uh, a point Phantom Rush, you actually pose a major threat to Mars together with Maledict. It's a lot of damage. UGD in the top lane trying to take out the pesky Harpy Stormcrafter, but it will survive with 50 HP. That's basically a hero at this stage of the game, the amount of damage that he's able to uh, dish out. You were saying that the Midas for Invoker makes even more sense these days. Why, why is that? The only thing that was changed was the neutral items drop, right? If they're, like, they're guaranteed to drop. Yeah, it's, it's about the flow of the game, right? I think you, in a lot of games, want to... I think playing full-on tempo drafts that need to win, as First Blood is happening bottom here, thoughts of fine shoe. Um, I think full-on tempo drafts, maybe if you're playing something like Chen or whatever, they can still be pulled off, but I think mostly some of the changes to defense that have happened in this patch with like slower leveling, more glyphs when you're defending, and 
uh, more, you know, even if you want to go that far, more armor on the Ancient or whatever, like to try to stall out the game, you have more ways. I, I think Midas just makes more sense, right? We also see players picking it up a lot more than they did in the last patch because games are just, whether or not they're going a lot longer, the like the way they go into the later stage seems a lot more favorable for Midas. So I think Invoker wants that item a lot of the time. Leslau and the rest of Quincy Crew, in terms of just pure CS, they're slightly ahead right now. I say that it's already a 1k lead for them. And this is something and that was we before saw. the first blood, even. Yeah, that was that, that is true. That just made things worse, I suppose. But this is something we see a lot of the time from Sonics uh, in the NADPC. They, they just dominate the laning stage and they kind of just snowball. So the question is, what can Felt do to stem the bleeding here? Because if it just continues at its current pace, this is going to be. Uh, pretty hard to come back from, like, five, six minutes from now, if they get at this pace. Yeah, it's, it's concerning when you're playing against a Chen lineup and you lose all three lanes, right? Because then the flow of the game can very quickly get out of hand. So I think a lot of it comes down to Invoker and DP in tandem making successful moves. These two heroes are very, very strong in a 10. Oh, bottom lane. And he's going to survive. Serious just, damage onto Leslau. Fire. Bottom lane, though, like you said, Leslau with the Maledict. And end up picking a couple more procs of damage here, but he will survive. In mid lane, it was a lot of back and forth right click action between Quinn and Solji. Just uh, waiting for one of these two heroes to die. Full snap is there, but Quinn is going to blink so out now. Has no bottle charges, and first power rune comes up in 50 seconds as Fade in the top lane. Getting some cover thanks to UGD and his little batter so which that is something we didn't really mention the shoe in the bot lane is gonna get up a nice paralyzing cast on the two with the maledict as well shoe taking damage will not fall to fatha's right click from the shadow realm maledict you can see just ticking them away fatha one more proc will do it and paradise ends up getting credit for that one but something you want to mention obviously witch doctor you mentioned this earlier really good against chen because of the paralyzing cask and the creeps and whatnot but clockwork battery salt does a lot of damage now to these creeps. See the jump on the fade in the top lane. They get blocked by this mud golem. And the balance strike is there. There should be an easy one for your war. And the, the body blocks continue actually. And <laughs> the took the kill. <laughs> I mean he did all the work there, let's be real. Oh okay. I mean fine. Uh yeah, the whole clock versus Chen matchup, the perspective that I gave it from was the old one where it really sucks that you can't isolate heroes in fights because your battery is just going to keep hitting random stuff, right? Chen creeps. Um, you're also playing against a hero that has a global save, which is very annoying for Clock a lot of the time. Uh, so yeah, even though Battery Assault is now double damage against creeps, I think Chen still just tanks too much. So I still think this is a bad matchup for Clockwork in general. Uh, but they choose to pick it into Chen, so they must be pretty confident that they can... You know, it might just be a comfort thing, that they're very strong in this Clock DP lane, they have a lot of experience with it. But so far, not really gone too impressively, right? Monkey King is 38 and 16 against DP's 18 and 2. So yeah. they have been full out just destroyed in this top lane. And look at these body blocks again. Double Mud Golem surprise. Boundless strike from Yawar. Fade can barely move. These Mud Golems are absolutely decimating him. MSS with the great micro. Leads to yet another kill for... It still says Quincy Crew, doesn't it? How, did, how have they not gotten that fixed yet? That's crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they're still they're called SQ, right? They're called Sonics, but their logo there is still a Quincy Crew in the in the top. And their names, everything. Oh yeah, you're right. It's, the name is the SQ. That's it's true. coming soon, I think. <laughs> Part two of the battle pass will include the name change for Sonics, as UGD dies in the top lane. So you are sitting at two zero and one. And from a net worth perspective, he is top of the charts. Although, the next two are from Felt. So the movement coming out from Sonics, perhaps yeah, how? Uh, putting them a little bit on the back end from what we were expecting. How is Invoker 400 net worth ahead against Queen? I, I guess Quinn has had to buy quite a bit more region to sustain the lane. And Soldier, obviously, by virtue of being Quaswex Invoker, just keeps regening health for free. Uh, but looking over the CS overall there, Quinn with a 5 CS lead, but still 250 net worth behind is quite a bit from... Oh, he hasn't gotten that, power, that precious Quinn power rune. I think he's missed out That's on true. both of them. That would yep. 
Oh, I'm at a back end. Oh, Fata's in Fata. huge trouble. Lots of TP's coming. He's gonna position himself onto the bottom here, knowing that he is clearly dead. He's trying to stay alive as long as possible. That did require four members of Felt. He yeah. He can just right-click that mid-tower. I think require is not the word I would go for there. I don't think Solji had to be there, but at least he gets earned charges um, from that rotation. So he really wants to be there to get that running. Um, but yeah, he was definitely hoping to find a Mars there instead of just a, a Dark Willow as part of that part of that movement. And like you said, Quinn got some damage on the tower, top lane fade. Again, he's getting dove in the tower. Yeah, oh, God, more Mud so Golems. Strong. And this time we got the Hurricane to work in favor of Sonics again. And they're going to use this momentum to likely push this tier 1 tower. We did see a smoke from Felt, but it didn't materialize into anything for them. I, I feel like the skill build on DP is the wrong one for this game. I think you have to go 3 and Siphon against Chen, right? So that when they start running you down, this healing is really meaningful. You get an additional charge and it scales by 50% more than on level 2. So in that situation, you can put one on the Monkey King and one of the, one of the Chen creeps and you probably live and just run away. Um, so they're definitely taking advantage of that. I, I don't know if the third point in Crypt Swarm is necessary for him to ensure CS or to push out the wave. But at least in that instance, would have been very, very nice to have a bit more in the way of Siphon. Yeah, Fade You has don't had want a... your DP to be 0 and 3 in this game. Yeah, <laughs> he's had a very, very rough start, to be, yeah. to be sure. Quinn, he's about to get ganked, but Fata ends up breaking the smoke as UGD. He's going to get spotted by MSS. You can see the battery salt, like you said. You know, it does a lot more damage to creeps. These things are just super tanky. And that is so just much solo from 100 to 0 via MSS oh and his creeps. Goodness. Yeah, so gets the mud goal in the stun. He gets the purge from the little satyr. He gets the job done. And oh no, this cask is actually going to kill the golem. Oh boy, Chu and, is well. dead. When the mud golem dies, you get the little baby shard, boys. Not they really sure strong. what he was hoping for, to be honest with you. Like, that was not a possible play. Even if Invoca rotates over, I still think MSS just doesn't die. He has mech. He would have been totally fine. Lesla, I mean, this is crazy. So much space for Lesla to hit this bottom tier one as well. Uh, you can see that Yawar is going for the battle fury. He's relatively close, considering that it's only 11 minutes and he almost has the broadsword, so just a claymore away. Essentially, and that's with treads and orb of venom and a wraith band. Yeah, so not a rush plenty at all. of build-up items. Yeah. But I have to say, despite all of this, uh, Paradise he has been farming pretty damn well himself. He's getting close to finishing the Diffusal Blade. UGD not going to get stunned. I still think he's here. The concern here for out. Felt is that the next the next three minutes are super dangerous, right? Like Chen has mech and he's closing in on level seven. So there's Hand of God and Mechanism coming up in the fight. Uh, you would imagine Sonics want to start crushing this mid tower and just take control of way more than half the map. So I like what Felt are doing here with putting the Exo to use immediately top to try to open up and mirror the map at least with the, the tower they lost bottom. But here we go. Here comes Chen mid, and this is the first big test for the Radiant lineup. How do you stop this? Oh, you they're gonna start by don't do that, into I think. A ton of damage, and just like that, Fade is dead. That faded. Is not the way you want to say he faded into oblivion. No doubt about that. As Solji's gonna get clipped by the Terrorize, which should create enough space to get this arena off for Leslau. Doesn't get two, but he'll find Chu. It rhymes. It all works out in the end for Sonics. The MP makes them position a little bit differently, but this will still be a tier one tower for Sonics. And a 4K lead at 12 minutes. Can't say it's the most shocking development, but I think the one saving grace for Felt, potentially the silver lining, is this Phantom Lancer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just. You know how the win probability is bugged right now, right? In all your pub games, when you look after the game, you're like, what is this grab? I'm just looking at the win probability now. The game is like, all right, it's Sonic's 100%. <laughs> it's just literally just completely broken. That's pretty funny. Very nice. Um, but yeah, 5k lead. Yeah, that mid tower was a, an instrumental part in uh, Sonic's looking to take full control of the game. And I like DP's 
thought process of coming to defend this tower because I think it had to happen, but they just didn't do it correctly. She can't TP alone in front and just get blown away like that. They need Clockwork to cover, they need Witch Doctor to cover, and they at the very least need a Tornado EMP to cover when she does get gone on and not just let her die to Chen Creeps immediately. Yeah. The moment DP dies, that tower is gone, and it's a really, really big loss and a very important moment. Um, the silver lining was Invoker at least did not get killed even though he got terrorized because the Mars Arena just barely uh, missed him. Maybe they could have dove that with a sentry or a dust. Yeah, he is still about sonics. to get his Midas, so that will help, but say it helps, but then you're going against a Chen, right? Obviously, you can yeah. use it on the creeps, but that's not really a counter, I would say. Because the fact that you're getting a Midas means it's going to slow things down a bit, and that is exactly what Sonics wants, because they're going to push big time. It feels like this might be the kind of game where you actually need the vessel before the Midas, just because of how valuable it is against Chen and Monkey King, right? Like, if you get the vessel, then you can try to take fights where you can isolate and kill heroes. But the problem is you've made two kills in 14 minutes, so you're probably not very hopeful on that front. And you're already starting to enter plan B, which is, all right, we're going to get big on Invoker, we're going to get big on PL, and we're going to win this late game, which, from a theoretical standpoint, I think their lineup is probably a lot of the time going to be stronger in the late game. But it's very, very dangerous, based on what I've seen in this patch so far, to take that path against Chen. Les Lau. Nice sidestep. Yep, uses a Tumblr to get off the Mars Arena, but not really going to find much here, but you can see the stun lock applied to the Invoker, and the stun's coming out from Fata on top of this with their Sonic Wave set up, but the silence comes out immediately, so Quinn has to reset, as it looks like the Invoker will live. The Sonic's now on the back foot, but the hook shot there from UGD, they will get the kill onto Fata as the Centaurs continue to stomp away, but here comes the cask that will likely stun. Actually, there's a full wave there, so they actually dodged most of the cask there overall. Oh, Tornado coming in under Quinn. Cold snap as well, but he gets Hand of Gaben. But the Sun Strike, it's very little damage. I made that way too exciting considering he took about 50 damage, Cinderin. That Quinn was such live. a big opportunity for Felt. They, they just didn't coordinate that correctly. They silenced with DP on top of the Tornado. If those two spells are lined up correctly with NATO into silence, they get the Quinn kill there, which would have been really, really big. Uh, but in the end, they have to just settle for only getting the... They only got the Dark Willow and they used Exorcism, right? It's not... I mean, sure, it, it's not a tragedy, but Monkey King was never involved. So effectively, that was a 5v4, and you got a 5 position when the enemy team killed off. It's not great. And that was without Blink Dagger on Leslau. He tried to set it up with the Vault yeah. from his little horsey. Uh, didn't end up working the way he wanted, but now has the full Blink. He shoot. He's going to find Quinn. Instantly canceled that Death Ward. Yawar coming from the tree line. <laughs> that feels real bad. That was did a it point even old. attack once? No, I don't. It did not. I think they literally <laughs> cast the spells at the same time. Yeah, it was impressive. Now that's on cooldown. Not that that matters a whole lot, but uh, Yawar obviously has had this battle fear for quite some time now. Already the Mithril Hammer into his uh, BKB to come. And I'm assessing Quinn grouping up to try to take out Fade, but could just go for the good old fashioned power push. Or just get control of the jungle, which is what they're doing right now. Looks like they're pinging the bottom tier too. Might be a little yeah. safer for them to take. They're very well set up down here. They've already pushed out the wave. They have the Chen army that can just scout. They play some offensive observable as well. And they're actually going to just look for a UGD kill as well. Just trying to take more out of the map. No problem for Yawar to finish that off together with Quinn. They have shown two cores mid now though. And that could mean that Felt could try to defend this bottom tower. But guess what? Chen is almost so on the tower before they even arrive. Yeah, MSS they might is finally doing a lot be able of work. to get him here. Nice oh. tornado play. Nice Midas play too, Cinder. And the cast. Yep. The creeps are dying, but Leslau jumps in with the arena. It's going to be creeps for shoe the trade. Kill comes out from MSS, but all his creeps <laughs> he are dead. after all his creeps died. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh well. There was nothing really left to heal, but they still got the job done. They forced a rotation. They almost got the tower, and they lost absolutely nobody to kill the Twitch Doctor. Except the Chen army. You know, you need to rebuild. It's going to take a little bit of time. Let's see what creeps he manages to find for himself. Currently, the jungle is full of golems, if he wants those. Definitely grab a centaur here. I uh, don't think he meant to take a small one, but maybe. Maybe you want the magic resistance or first. 
Seems to be on purpose. He's killing the big one. People so. love this creep. It is good. It did get buffed, right? It used to be like 5% magic of this. Now it's 15. And it's 30 for creeps, which is really big, actually. You mean against creeps, right? No, for your own creeps. The aura is 15% oh, for allied heroes man, and 30% for allied creeps. I always read that horribly, apparently. Okay. Yeah, that's... yeah having, having this as one of the creeps in your army, I think, is really strong. I just thought he was going to take the big centaur as well, but he only wanted the courser this time. Oh, we got the Bramble, but the Hookshot counter initiation. Looks like Fata's going to be taken out inside the cogs. And a little bit of space here as Lazla jumps in with the spear. So it's going to be a one for one for the supports. The tier two taken out already in the bottom lane. It feels like Sonics are just slowly trickling this lead more in their favor. This is now 6k for them. I was about to say, I feel like they're only killing Fata. And then I looked at the scoreboard, and yes, they're only killing Fata. <laughs> Literally, four, all yeah, four kills four are on the enemy one. position five. So, I mean, yeah, you're finding picks, but it's on the lowest net worth hero every single time. And you're this time around, you're trading. Um, at the very least, with this mid-tier one gone, perhaps felt have a little bit more wiggle room on the map and they, their PL is going places. I'm really impressed with Paradise's farm so far, um, rivaling that of the Monkey King who had a total free lane and rushed Battle Fury. It's still, it's still pretty even between the two. Yeah, so that, that is, is really if you're a Felt fan here, you're looking at this guy. If anyone's gonna win this game, it will be the PL. He needs another item or two and then they need Invoker to get to a meaningful place for late game as well. I think DP ship has I wouldn't say it's fully sailed, but a huge part of why you grab this hero is over. We're 20 minutes in now. Spirit Siphon is going to start falling off uh, compared to early game, and all you had to show for it was a couple of tier 1 towers and some lost fights. So, not the greatest. Quint will break a smoke and get out. He still gets his precious rune, and the Aegis goes to Yawar. Yep. has the BKB. To go along with his Battle Fury, and now Ags looks to be next for him. And I want to talk about the Dagger of Ristul, but it might have to wait, because Fata is approaching. You're watching up the Boundless Strike. Looks like this is going to be a freebie onto UGD. Has been killed. Uh, mid lane, though, Fade attempting to TP out. Will they spot him? Not in time. Nice escape. They didn't have a stun ready either, so... He was actually pretty safe. The spear was on cooldown from the bottom move, so. All right, for he the, was new, gonna get out. the new neutral items, Dagger of Ristul. It's the 10 yeah. attack speed, so by default, it's probably one of the worst ones. But when you activate it for 100 health, it's not mana, you gain 40 damage for 8 seconds. I feel like this one is more often than not, not great. Would you agree with that? I think it's very hero specific. Yeah. Um, which kind of, I guess, is the same as what you said, right? Like it's situationally good, but it's situationally good primarily because of the heroes you've drafted rather than the game state. Um, there's like a few, there's like a small handful of heroes that this would be really good on. The primary example for me is probably gonna be PA. You know, you lose the health, but you, yeah, Huskar too, but like PA, you sacrifice 100 health, but you immediately get it back with the change to Phantom Strike, right? Cause you lifesteal. Uh, and you, it makes your crits a lot stronger at that point in time. 17 minutes in, 40 damage is no joke. Uh, I and it's part like, of a burst, uh, right? You have it for a moment. You have it for one go, and then it's weak. Mm -hmm. But I also think, like, the thing about this neutral and compared to others is that it's like a, it's an activation one, right? So you can have it, use it, and then backpack it for another item after. Uh, Shoot is deleted. Yep. Bata will be fine. It does take a lot of EMP there, though. Radiant's top tower. Under attack. Okay, I, I, the sunstrike, he stood still to drop mana boots and use mango. <laughs> of course, very important so. to be efficient. Yeah. I mean, they are pro players after all, that's what they do. Sometimes it doesn't work out in their favor, but when it does, it just looks very, very nice. Uh, this is an item, as we're going to see Wukong's command. I really want to talk about this item, apparently. It's Mars Arena comes kill. in, Paradise, the top net worth for get him, right now. The hookshot coming in to buy some space, but no. Paradise does die inside of the arena, and Yawar pops the BKB now. He's kind of left to his own just... devices, but ends up wasting basically the whole BKB, and now the reinforcements are here from Sonics.
Lazla with the rebuke. Fade looks to be mega dead, but a nice cast coming in, stunning two heroes repeatedly. Yawar gets off the balance strike and a nice terrorize coming in as well to buy him a little bit more time, but they do find the Monkey King in the end. It's a two for one. And Felt, I think, are actually happy with this. As you can see, a little bit of damage being done now. As Quincy Crew, aka Sonics, looking to try to finish this off. They find the third kill. Not able to find any more. And you can see during that stage, the bottom lane was being pushed and it forced out a fortification uh, via MSS. Classic Chen things. Has that black dragon from courtesy of his shard. Once he hits level 12, he can have two ancients. We'll see what his second ancient of choice will be. But yeah, it was it was nice for uh, Felt there to get the Monkey King, but paying three heroes and a Glyph bottom is not a good enough trade for them. They needed to get that kill and get out, uh, but couldn't really get the full-on reset. Even with a great cast, like you pointed out, from Shu, uh, and no Sonic Wave ready from Quinn, it was still not enough, and that's kind of just showing the state of the game for them right now. Uh, yeah, if, if, they were, if they were a couple K net worth uh, closer in that fight, it could have made a big difference, I think. It was actually pretty close. To being a I mean, if point. DP had her BKB, right, as an example, that would have made a huge difference. And he will get it now. Yeah, she just melts in these fights. Yeah. BKB is a huge help, though. I actually don't think DP will die during uh, BKB against this lineup. There's Monkey King, sure, he's going to do some physical damage, but I don't, I don't think there's nearly enough between the Monkey King and the Sonic Wave and one Mars Rebuke. You pop BKB, you get some drains going. This is a timing for Felt that they need to take advantage of when Exo comes online in 30 seconds. They need to win a fight. But Some Smoke is here, Lesla. Well, Quinn actually jumps in first, Shu. He's gonna take the full arena. I think Felt will actually be okay with that. And just the Witch Doctor in the end, but now you got the Triceratops to work with in this tier two tower push. Meatball is gonna be avoided for the most part. The illusions you can see are just the bane of MSS's existence right now, or specifically his creep's existence. Especially with that shard, so the spirit lance ends up bouncing. Really annoying to deal with is they're going to take this outpost now. So with a 9k lead for Sonics, X Roche, we won't know for another three minutes still. I wonder if this is a Scotty game on Peel instead of Heart, because of the healing reduction being that powerful. Like, this is the default path you usually take on PL because you want just more health on your illusions, you want the constant region in fights, but I think Scotty has a really strong case here. Um, obviously not going to be going for it, as we can tell. He's just following the cookie-cutter build, if you will. Man to defusal into heart. Hook shot. Yep, okay, again. guess who it is? It is Fata. He will die first. That is six kills now for Fel. Wait, who died? Oh, that's right. Yawar ended up dying, so that was the first... Non oh, this could be dangerous though. Out to man from Yawar. Going to the high ground, Fate pops the BKB, so not able to do too much against him. His MS had stuck inside the corner, but UGD, he's gonna get stuck inside his own cogs via Quinn. He uses a sonic wave to delete him swiftly. One for one as Fata actually buys back into the game, thinking they might be able to expound on this lead a little bit. Now that the exorcism is down, if Quincy Crew want to try to reinitiate. Yeah, they could definitely get mid tier too. I don't think there's anything stopping them. When Exo is down, the Radiant just don't have enough in the tank. This is such a crucial part of their lineup uh, to have DP available of that. And it's just not there anymore. Uh, actually cancels her TP mid. So now Fade is even stuck bottom lane. But Quincy, or well, Sonics will yield. Or rather, just not go for the push at all in the lane and just going to chill. Um, and keep building. So, yeah. Just continuing... Continuing their path, which is slowly but steadily leading them into a very favorable position. I don't know what their timing to try to end this game with Chen is. If they want to get the second Roche for the shard as well. Uh, a free shard for Queen of Pain would be very nice. And Monkey King will probably get another item by that time as well, looking up as Scotty currently. Yeah, Yawar is going to be uh, very tough to deal with. Elven Tunic. I thought that was for Quincy or God, this logo. The logo is ruining me. Uh, but Quinn, Sonic like you crew. said, Shiva's is close. What do you think of the Ogre Seal totem, by the way? I thought it was really, really... It sounded pretty broken to me when I saw it. And now I've seen it played. I've played with it a little bit myself. I don't really know how good it is. I thought it was going to activate a bit faster and just effectively be more or less a free force staff. But there's a little bit of activation delay. The travel time is longer. 
but then it also gives some nice stats, right? And it does damage if you connect it and slows. And the distance is pretty good. Yeah, it's it's. I would still say it's a good item, uh, and it's way less situational than Dagger Vistal, as an example. Like this, just is a good item on every hero in the game, right? Yeah, it gives two hundred health, and it gives you an, a mobility item. You could argue it's too good still uh, because of that aspect. Obviously, beforehand you had the um, what were they called? Why can I not remember the item it replaced? Uh, oh. the gave the gave free padding. Why? Where is that? Gay, oh, the spider legs. Yeah, wow. Oh my god, I couldn't think of spider legs. His, like, really his brain iconic is so This is what happens now. when we get old. Yeah. So it, it kind of replaced in that aspect that the mobility part oh, in look. the tier 3 section. Um, and this is a bit more... This is less situationally dependent than the spider legs were. Because you can use this when you're fully slowed, right? <laughs> um, and I think you can also travel across terrain. With this yes, you can. Yeah, I think I think it's a much more balanced item for sure. It'll be interesting to see what they do for like before TI in terms of trying to balance some of these new ones because I think the dagger of wrist tool will have to get changed in some respect to make it at least usable on wider variety of heroes. Otherwise, it's just going to be one of those. If you don't have one of the few heroes that can really take advantage of it, it's a dead item, which they've tried to kind of get rid of, right? They've coned these down a lot to make them usable in almost every game, seemingly. So I think that's the number one item for me that I look for uh, I getting changed. Yeah. I haven't looked at the rest of the neutral items, so I can't remember all of them anymore. If they're changing Dagger of Bristol, you know, they could just remove it, and then while they're at it, they can find <laughs> some other ones. I thought you were going to go even further, Cinderin. Yeah, some other ones. <laughs> just keep it vague. Gotcha. <laughs> I, you know, I got to shoehorn it in. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a contractual obligation for you to bring that up every single time tick. we have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Quinn looks oh. like he's going to get Shiva's, but there's the Mars Arena from Leslau. That is going to be the death of Shu again. He actually uses the Ogre Seal Column to get to the other side a little bit more swiftly, despite being an Ogre Seal, like which is Shu, fat. Does he? I think that's the fourth arena on the Witch Doctor. Yeah, he's done that quite a bit. But they seem to be content with it. And the Triceratops and company trying to get out. Bramble will prevent Felt from going any further. I think this is just Sonic's kind of Want to get a little bit more map control and waiting for the next Roche, which we can see is in a minute and a half. Deso, so going for more of an Amar type Mars build uh, for Mr. Leslau. A little more well, right the click. The Amar build here would be Ags, I feel like. Here Not anymore. Peel. That literally got nerfed because of Amar. Whether it's, it's unusable, I don't know. It's probably still worth it, right? Hmm. Against Peel specifically? I have I to look at what the good. actual nerfs were again. I mean, he might he might still want to get it after Deso. The other thing about this Deso is it's just going to speed up an eventual base push that they want to go for, right? All right, felt smoked. Yep, Paradise has They're the double damage. Here. Trying to go to the high ground. Bolt snap onto Quinn, but he's able to blink out. And again, the Brambles preventing this gank from going any further. Let's see if Paradise is able to take out some creeps in the meantime. Quinn sidestepping the tornado. And again, felt coming out empty with this pretty good opportunity there with the smoke and DD. Oh yeah, they really wanted to find something, but Sonics were ready. It was unfortunately Quinn they ran into, so the Clockwork didn't really dare to hookshot because it's like, it's just a tricky situation. If they had found, say, Fata for the seventh time, that would have been cool, but you know, they, I guess their ideal target there is actually Mars. But the issue here is, do you have enough chain stun to kill before the BKBs start, you know, just dismantling you in the fights? Your BKB on Mars, BKB on Monkey King, and BKB on Queen. So no matter which of the three cores you jump, you better have the burst to back it up. Or oh, this is a risky endeavor for Felt. Trying to go for the old Roshan play as Shu gets off the Death War, but Queen with a BKB and right clicks are more than enough to take him out. Terrorizes Dodge. Paradise gets up a nice doppelganger. See a hook shot coming as well, but UGD trying to focus on Yawar, but he's going to die instead. So double kill for Quinn, double buyback from Felt. 
They're trying to get something out of this play as Fade has to pop a very defensive BKB. Let's see, crew. AKA Sonics. Looking to reset and try to wait out this exorcism, which is ending now. So not a whole lot of damage done to Sonics at all. No, and they didn't even have to use a single ulti, right? They they have everything still in the tank. Did they they popped Quinn's BKB. That was literally the only resource they expended to get two buybacks for an EXO and to defend Roche. It doesn't mm. get much better than that. I think Sonic's can just look to go in straight yeah, away here. Quinn, he doesn't, doesn't have BKB, BKB though. though. Cogs, nicely done. They're trying to keep him at bay. Definitely Glass was there as well. He's dead. 70 seconds of no Quinn, but a big Mars Arena BKB popped by Leslau. And inside that Wukong's command, Sonics are decimating Felt. As Paradise outside of the Wukong's Commando, doppelgangs to the high ground. But there's the Ogre Seal Club from Leslau. Off the, all right, does get off the spear. Will he be able to get enough space to take out Paradise? Noir, Balance Strike connects. Remember, Paradise extremely tanky. It's off the Manta style, but will go down to the right clicks eventually. So it's a four for two. They obviously lose Fata as always. And despite <laughs> losing Quinn at the beginning of the fight, Sonic still win. I don't really like the way Sonic's approached that. Why was it Quinn that they sent into the pit when he's the one core that doesn't have BKB? I think literally anyone else on their team should have gone before the Queen if they want to scout out the pit. I understand the end result is good enough, right? Like, you, you get the enemy team to pile up, and that's why you get a great arena and good home ulti, but I think you could have accomplished the same thing by just sending in Chen and letting him be the bait, or sending in the Widow, or even Mars, you know? You could have burst him. Before he gets BKB off and gets healed. Oh, so a baby. Bit. I thought Yawar might take the shard and give it and just hold it for Quinn. But Quinn already has his. So we're going to see the oh, balance strike yeah. shard, which lets you teleport if you right click your balance strike, teleport to the end of your balance strike. Yeah. Which Very I think nice against PL. It, it is good. I'm not saying it's not good. I think they could make it a little more quality of life. Happy, if that's even a correct phrase in there, we'll just assume it is. Why not just make it? I know he has a lot of abilities already, and maybe that's why, but a sub ability, kind of like the reverse time walk, that gives you the choice to cast it during the balance strike. So, like that half second period, instead of right clicking it, because I, I find that one to be kind of weird. As Quinn looking to take out UGD, he'll be able to do so pretty successfully. Has the BKB. Just waiting out the silence, though. Maledict, cast, he'll live. But now, Yawar comes in with his own ultimate and fade inside it with the BKB. Not going to do a whole lot for him. Balance Strike is there. Not going to use the shard this time. Here comes the Mars Arena. So Leslon Company want to finish this game right here, right now. 5v2. The focus is on Paradise. And they will be successful in taking me out. Does have buyback, though. But they're going to lose their Invoker if he's not careful. Oji pops the BKB. Paradise holding on to that buyback for now, knowing that the tier two is still standing in this top lane. And this is definitely going to be a lane Rax or a PL buyback. There is no way they hold without him. He will have Exo when she spawns in 20, but I think it's just going to be too late. Like, this push is very quick. All right, you are. You are. Gold snap. I was trying to find an opening, but I just have to focus on the buildings instead. That eggs on Mars is going to work. Indeed. And to end up getting it in the end is Hookshot is there. Shu gets up a nice death ward. But that is Leslau you're going against. He uh, not taking too much damage here. His clockwork is dead. No buyback available. And this looks to be a set of racks in favor of Sonics, who still have that Aegis for a good amount of time. So we'll see if they're able to get this second Rax now. Although, have to be a little bit careful. Don't want to expend this Aegis when there's so much time left. Tier 2 still standing in the mid lane, so it's either bottom lane or back. Looks like they'll reset. His brain is so big. Yeah. I mean, Exo was used. What's Did stopping I you from just going next hold lane? Hold I know you don't have Hand of God now, but I don't think you need it. You still have mech and 20 charges on the locket, so you can easily do a big burst heal for your teammates. Uh, Felt never bought a vessel, so this healing will be fully effective. There's no Scotty either to mitigate it. That is PL's next item that he's eyeing up, but unfortunately, it's probably going to be a little bit too late as you're not 30,000 gold behind minute 36, approaching that golden 1k a minute mark, which generally leads to 
100% win expectancy. Uh, and in this game, obviously, the win expectancy has been 100% for Dyer since it began for some reason. So we're not going to be able to see that change and talk about it. We're just going to pretend yeah. that it's there. Um, but yeah, Sonic's kind of, as you know, as expected for this series, really. We're expecting them to crush, and they are. Um, however, it is, if you think about the DPC games that we saw from them, you do see the clear, like, changing of pace, right? I think most of Sonic's games against Felt during the DPC would have been over by now, or maybe even five to ten minutes ago, but things are a bit slower, it takes time to build up, and that will have an influence on I'm actually, the series as well. for once, <laughs> gonna disagree with you. I think Quincy Crew, one thing they're known for is if they're better than another team, they actually won't win the games fast. The games go 35, 40 minutes a lot of the time. sure their games against Felt were like 20 minute stomps, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to look back. I mean, they were stomps, but I feel like they were longer stomps, which Quincy Crew are known for. But we can look back and pretend that one of us is definitely correct. Oh, Leslau nice deletes Leslau. two heroes with the help of Quinn. And it looks like this is the beginning of the end of game number one in favor of Sonics. So two cores alive as you are with that Aegis still intact. Kind of wants to die now. I don't think I've seen him use the shard, by the way, for the balance strike at all. A little disappointing, you are. As GG is called. So game one, Sonics take it pretty convincing fashion. And kind of expected, not the biggest surprise. Uh, we'll see if Felt can take what they learned from this game number one and try to apply something new to game number two. In other news, all of my predictions for this game were incorrect. Me too. All four. Me too. <laughs> uh, so that's unfortunate. But Solji yeah. had the least deaths, and he yeah. lost. What is this, man? <laughs> yeah, I ended up 2-0 and 3. You know, he, he stayed alive, but I don't think... I feel like if you're going to run this kind of a strategy into Chen as felt, you need to be able to put more pressure early and not let Chen take the towers and control the map. Like They, they needed to fight better and faster. And I know that's a tall order and it's easy to say, but it's kind of what you sign up for when you pick like this. You need to be able to take early mid-game fights. They weren't able to in particular because DP got absolute trash top. Uh, and that was probably the key hero for their mid-game to stay afloat. And once your timings are broken like that, you're kind of falling back to farming. You're defaulting to finding time for your peel and your invoker. But guess what? Sonics were getting more out of the map. They were killing you and they got every Roche. So... It was very, very one-sided, uh, as expected. I think Felt can do better than this, though, in the second game. I feel like it would be nice to see them you know, play more aggressively, take more initiative um, in a matchup that they're clearly unfavored in. So hopefully how do they can you, show a bit more. How do you have zero deaths in a loss? How is that possible? I mean, I've seen it. I'm not saying it hasn't happened before, but like how? <laughs> you play backline. You're a Quasvex Invoker. You're escaping. But, I mean, you're kind of right. right? I, I feel like Quaswex Invoker is probably not the hero you want to have zero deaths on and a loss, right? You want to take the risks. You want to make the moves and trade away yourself to yeah. get a good fight for your DP or your PL. And it just didn't happen. So, pretty smooth sailing for the Sonics in this one. Yeah, so game number one goes to Sonics. So, that means game number two will be underway very shortly. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with that game number two.